Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today I'm discussing stem cell therapy for cerebral palsy in South Africa. So I'm going to go through how common CP is, what are some of the causes, the traditional treatments. Uh, we'll talk about stem cell therapy for CP, what the research shows, and then we'll talk about our R3 program in South Africa for CP. So how common is CP? About 10,000 babies are born each year with CP in the U.S. alone. Um, the worldwide average of CP is 2.5 per 1,000 births. In rural South Africa, the prevalence of CP has been estimated to be as high as 10 per 1,000 live births. So that's four times the worldwide average, um, which is extremely high. Um, we have clinics in seven countries now, and that's uh, up there. With, with the highest we see. What are the risks? Well, home birth, which is common in rural settings, uh, birth asphyxia, uh, prematurity, low birth weight, or intrauterine infection, okay? Boys are diagnosed more often with CP than girls. It's the most commonly diagnosed childhood motor disability in the United States. I think it's probably the most common in the world. Um, now, thankfully, over half of children with CP can walk independently, and that's always the goal, you know, is to get them walking on their own some way instead of being, you know, confined to a wheelchair. So what are the causes? Well, the brain damage that, ha that leads to CP can happen before birth, during birth, within a month after birth, or during the first years of a child's life while the brain is still developing. So congenital CP occurs before or during birth. That's uh, congenital CP accounts for 80% of the total. Acquired CP is brain damage occurs more than 28 days after birth, and that's usually an infection or a head trauma um, that occurs. There are four main types of cerebral palsy. Spastic CP affects 80% of those, and those are the children where you see increased muscle tone um, and spasm. Dyskinetic CP is when there's uncontrollable movements. Ataxic CP uh, includes problems with balance and coordination, and then mixed CP, where it includes, you know, combinations of the uh, above. Traditional treatments um, really go for the symptoms, right? So medications for muscle spasms and seizures, such as baclofen, um, anticonvulsants, uh, Botox injections, stool softeners, um, and then sleep aids. So Injections can really help um, with reducing these spasms so that kids can, you know, fit into a brace maybe, walk better. Um, and then surgery, uh, a lot of the children that we see who come in for stem cell therapy, they might do great from the stem cells, but if they have contractures, they're not going to be able to, to walk potentially, or it might be very tiring, you know, if they have a flexion contracture of the knee or something. So with surgery, uh, that can be used by orthopedic doctors to release contractures, reduce spasm, um, and hence increase flexibility. All right, so alternative CP therapies may include energy therapy, movement therapy, mind and body techniques. Aqua therapy can be helpful, um, and then we're gonna talk about stem cell therapy. All right, uh, it began to get extremely popular as more research studies have come out showing its benefits. A lot of the patient prospective patients and their parents that call us, they think that stem cell therapy is really, really new, when in fact it's not. I mean, we've been doing it for 11 years and 21,000 procedures around the world, and you know it's been around for, for decades. So maybe they just found out about it, but it's been around for quite a long time. Since we found out that, um, also we found out that cross-matching and HLA typing is unnecessary when you use the birth tissue, such as umbilical cord tissue, so, you know, you don't have to have the child's own umbilical cord, which is great. Um, we do know that cell counts are very important. One of the main reasons that patients fail treatment is because they just didn't get enough. Um, now, the potential options include the following, autologous, which means your own tissue, the child's own tissue with either bone marrow uh, from the iliac crest, the hip, or uh, fat, which is called adipose. Allogeneic, which is what we use most commonly, which is umbilical cord tissue uh, or amniotic fluid. Um, all right, so let's go through some research studies. Um, here's one from 2016, and this is a meta-analysis. Basically what that means is that you accumulate numerous studies, 
you pick the really good ones and then you statistically analyze them together. All right, so this looked at five studies combined and they showed a statistically significant effect on improvement of gross motor skills. What does that mean? Well, that's balance, coordination, um, umbilical cord blood was the most effective intervention. Um, even with no immunosuppression, there's rare side effects. So you might get a low-grade fever, maybe some nausea, things like that, but nothing uh, serious was seen. In the, we haven't seen anything serious either in many, many, many treatments. Here's a study uh, from 2018 looking at 54 patients who were randomized, half received the stem cell therapy they followed up for two years. So they gave them four intravenous infusions at a fixed dose of 50 million stem cells times four. Um, I think it was every month they got these. So that's a lot, especially for kids, right? Um, so for instance, if they weigh 20 kilograms, then that's over 2 million stem cells per kilogram times four. So that's a good number of stem cells. The results indicated that umbilical cord blood uh, and mesenchymal stem cell infusion, along with basic rehab, was safe and effective in improving gross motor and comprehensive functions in children with CP. So once again, the same type of outcome. The kids were able to walk better, um, more balance um, as well. So here's a study uh, from quite a few years ago on umbilical cord stem cells for CP. This was only eight kids. Um, none of them had graft versus host reactions. We've never seen that. And, and actually, since this study came out, umbilical cord blood actually is used as a treatment for graft versus host disease when someone gets a, a transplant for cancer with stem cells. Um, all the children showed some improvement in mobility and cognitive function. Six of them um, were rated as improving in muscle tone, hip movement, leg movement, rolling, balancing um, uh, by the time of the six-month uh, follow-up. I do want to note that we don't use embryonic stem cells ever. Those are the ones that come from aborted fetuses. Um, if you don't even consider the ethical issues, they're just not safe. They cause rejection in patients. They can cause tumors. Um, so they shouldn't be used anywhere. Uh, neither should induced pluripotent stem cells because they're not ready either. We use umbilical cord tissue, um, and in that are a lot of mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells, which are very safe. They don't produce a rejection reaction that we've ever seen, and they don't cause tumors. No evidence to date has ever shown that. So the R3 stem cell program for CP in South Africa has combined all the essentials for a first-rate program. We have expert doctors with lots of experience. Uh, you, will get, you will have a dedicated patient concierge representative to assist you from you know, your first phone call all the way through the process. We do use very safe biologics that come from labs in the United States that are regulated by the FDA. They're CGMP compliant, ISO certified, very, very high quality assurance that actually exceeds the FDA standards. We have a convenient location in Johannesburg, about 20 minutes from the airport. We will pick you up and provide ground transportation for no charge. Um, we also have a location in Umschlange next to Durban on the coast, but we don't do the, the children procedures there. And we are the most cost-effective program in the world. Um, we are allowed to culture the biologics for international use. This is called expansion. Uh, our USA lab is accredited with a pristine safety record. We do keep the cultured cells to fourth generation or less, fourth passage or less, which means that they're very active, pure, and potent. Um, a lot of times we don't use a preservative, and if we do, we use minimal. We still get 85% plus viability. Um, kids, it, it depends on their weight, you know, as to what the, in kilograms, as to what we're going to offer uh, as far as cell counts. Um, we want to make sure it's safe. We want to make sure it's also effective. Um, and like I said, we will uh, provide the ground transportation and also help with any other logistics assistance. So visit our website today at r3stemcell.com slash south-africa. That's our website dedicated uh, to South Africa. We see patients from all over the continent coming in because our treatments are so effective, not just clinically, but cost effective. So for instance, if you, or let's say your child for CP, let's say you're gonna get 100 million stem cells. 
That's a lot. Um, and in Panama or China, that's going to cost you twenty to twenty-five thousand U.S. dollars. With us, it's just over seven thousand U.S. dollars. We have options that are much more sales, less sales, and less expensive. But we want to make sure that it's the most effective uh, for patients. So call us today at two seven two one three zero zero one eight three one. And we'll get you scheduled for that free phone consultation, which is no obligation and confidential. Thank you very much for watching.